Sometimes, when you're working with antiques, you find things that aren't exactly what you wanted. These holes have worn out. Well, splintered, rotted away, whatever you want to call them. To the point that they won't hold the screw anymore. So the solution I've come up with is to shim the hole. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to take and put a stick down in there and some glue and that's going to lock that shim down in the hole so that the screw has something to bite into. Only one hole is really loose, but rather than have a problem later, I'm just going to deal with both of them right now. The glue isn't entirely necessary because quite often just the fact that you're, you're driving the screw down in there is enough to make it stay because the wedging action of the screw will make it stay in there. Yeah, that drew up. So it's solidly in place now. I spent a little time thinking about how I wanted to make the pin that goes onto the bottom of the vise. My original thinking was to have a piece of threaded rod go through a hole in the leg and then I would use a jam nut to lock that threaded rod into the 
leg and put a, a nut on the threaded rod to allow it to be set for different depths. I think that's still a good idea. Now I'm kind of wondering whether I want to go with burying the nut inside of it or with having the nut on the outside. If I put the nut on the, if I bury the nut, that means I'd have to countersink it. And countersinking it would involve probably using a Forstner bit and checking for sizes. I have a kit of Forstner bits over here, so picking out size isn't a difficulty. It's deciding whether I want to do this or not. Forstner bit will allow that nut to be slipped down below the surface. That's going to give me a good inch of material in between for the nut on the back side to push against. I think I'll be plenty strong because it's just a matter of trying to shove a one inch diameter slug of nut through a piece of oak. Not an easy thing. Probably take four or five tons of pressure and I don't think I can generate that much off the screw especially since it's a two to one ratio between the top of the vise and where the pins gonna be I think I'm good with that I do think I want to countersink a hole here Then, in the bottom of that hole, drill a hole to allow clearance for this 5 8 piece of threaded rod down through the bottom of the vise. That'll let that slide back and forth inside this piece of wood. I think I'm going to have to make it bigger though. Probably I'm going to have to make it more a vertical, maybe drill two 5 8 holes uh, separated by half a diameter and then pair it out because when you open and close one of these vices it tends to rock that pin back and forth because the top will open up and then the bottom will stay in place. So I'm thinking if I give it a little room it will allow it to slide back and forth big thing I'm trying to avoid is having it rotate. So if I make an oblong hole similar to what this one is, not quite as big, about twice the diameter. The length of the oval would be about twice this 5 8 so maybe inch and a half, inch and a quarter, something like that. That should give me enough room to let that move back and forth. And that would involve drilling a couple of holes in the leg and then joining them, joining between them with the chisel, which on a four inch deep piece is going to be uh, pretty good depth to work with. I'll have to stay below where I have this bolt or above it. Below it, I'm going to be in that area right there. That's going to be pretty shaky. Above it, I could be all the way up in here, but then I lose some of the effective length of the vise. I think I want to stay above it. I think I want to be right in this area here. I have to drill through this three and a half inch length and then the inch and a half of the two by four on the back side. 
have two holes and then join them. That'll put the hole here about there. Now I'm about one and a half to one. Still plenty of leverage on that chop. Then I'll cut this off. Not been fond of that hole. It's it's crooked. Admittedly, this is an antique piece, and if I was just totally hung up on having this remain a whole antique, I probably wouldn't even be using it. Uh, so I think I'm going to drill a hole there. When I get the hole drilled through that, counterboard on both sides with this uh, Forstner bit, then drill down through the center of it, because you always want to drill your, your countersunk hole first. If you try and drill the 5 8 hole first, you lose the center point that holds your Forstner bit. It makes it much more difficult to do. So having a plan makes it much easier to go forward. I'm not entirely winging this. I do think about what I'm doing before I do it. You don't always see all the arguments back and forth because they're going on inside my head. Which is probably a good thing. If you could see them, it'd be a little chaotic. I'm using the line down below to allow me to eyeball a spot on the center of this post. So I'm going to put a hole right there, and a hole right there, and then link the two to make an oval. That'll have me end up with a hole through this, lined right up there, that'll go straight down through. That's if I drill it correctly. That remains to be seen, but we're going to give it the old college try. Because I'm trying to make a more precision part than I have been on the rest of the bench, I'm going to have to spend a little more time making sure that everything lines up correctly.
all the bits and pieces are perpendicular and square and gonna line up right. I can always widen things out a little bit and increase the tolerancing and change the process a little bit. But it's easier to spend a little time up front doing it right than it is to spend a lot of time afterwards trying to make it work. Or even worse, spend the next 20 years using the thing and thinking, man, if I had only done it different. 